Do you love going to Broadway shows, but can't go now because Broadway's closed? Join tour guide Tim and Belasco too as they bring Broadway history to you. Grab your Broadway passport for what's in store on your virtual Broadway tour. The New Amsterdam Theatre opened one exact week after the Hudson and quickly became known as the House Beautiful. At night, the entire seven-story facade was illuminated, which was a rarity in those pre-billboard Times Square days. When audiences walked up to the theatre originally, they were greeted by an entire three-story limestone arch, complete with a knight, a maiden, and the muses of theatre looking down from above. It was truly a sight to behold. By the 1950s, that limestone arch had decayed, and the owners at that time decided to replace it with a new, more modern marquee. Cut to the 1990s. Disney, renovating the theatre for The Lion King, was given an option. With landmarking rules, both the original arch as well as the modern marquee had each been there for 50 years of the theater's history. Both were technically historical in their own ways. With $38 million spent on the interior, Disney made the practical decision to keep the modern marquee intact. Thankfully, if you look closely, you'll see some remnants of the original arch underneath as a tiny glimpse into the theater's past. Broadway and fashion have always been intertwined. Nowadays, audience members wear jeans and t-shirts to see a show, but in the early 1900s, women would wear corseted evening gowns and men would wear three-piece suits. And of course, hats. Lots and lots of hats. Now, this was a problem. And nowadays, as actors, we deal with audience members texting during a show or answering phone calls mid-show, which is insane. But in the early 1900s, the hats were so large, the problem was no one could see. So when you walked into a theater, there were hilariously illustrated signs that would tell you, please take off your hat before a show as a courtesy of the person behind you. In 1907, this was taken to new heights when a show opened at the New Amsterdam called The Merry Widow. The lead woman, Lily Elsie, was costumed in this large hat that became known throughout New York City as the Merry Widow hat. Every woman in society had to have one. To celebrate the 275th performance of the show, the producers decided to give away one of these hats as a souvenir to every woman who bought a ticket. Of the 1,600 people in attendance, they assumed that about 400 of the audience would be men, so they had about 1,200 hats on hand to give out. They very quickly realized there wasn't going to be enough. Who also realized that? Every woman in attendance. It led to what every newspaper in New York City called a hat skirmish. Hilarious. The show most famously associated with the New Amsterdam would have to be Florence Ziegfeld's Ziegfeld Follies. I like to think of it as uh, Saturday Night Live meets a Las Vegas show meets the Radio City Rockettes all rolled into one three hour glorious show. For those audience members who were looking for a more risque version of the Follies, they simply had to take the elevator in the lobby of the New Amsterdam all the way up to the roof home of a rooftop garden theater where the drinks were always flowing and the air was thick with cigarette and cigar smoke. The upstairs entertainment was called the Midnight Frolic and featured a scandalous see-through glass balcony and women costumed in balloons that the men were encouraged to pop with their cigars. And as for the audience's reaction, instead of applause, each table was outfitted with a gavel for the theater goers to hammer their approval. One of which I have that is a little piece of Broadway history that lives in my office. Due to a decline in alcohol sales with the establishment of Prohibition, the upstairs closed. What's there today, you ask? The Disney theatrical offices where lots of Disney magic is created daily amid some of the original elements that have survived all these years later. If you've ever been in a theater at night in America, you may have seen a singular light bulb atop a pole center stage. This is called the ghost light. It's supposed to keep all the ghosts and spirits away from the stage in the unoccupied hours of the theater. 
1952 at the New Amsterdam, the night watchman on duty was greeted by a woman in a long green beaded gown to the floor, a sash across her chest that said O-L-I-V-E, olive, and in her right hand she was clutching a blue glass bottle. She waved, blew him a kiss, and promptly disappeared right before his eyes. After much research and freaking out, it seemed that the woman looked very similar to Folly's girl, Olive Thomas, who had performed the New Amsterdam from 1915 to 1920. Since that first sighting, there have been many glimpses of Olive over the years, usually about once per decade, and only ever seen by men. Anyone who attends a performance at the theater can get their own glimpse. A large photograph of Olive hangs at the entrance for all to see. So the next time you see a show, probably Aladdin, we encourage you to say hi to Olive to keep her happy and take part in this famous superstition at the New Amsterdam. Hello! Hi! Happy Saturday night on Broadway here at Broadway Up Close. And uh, we're doing this as part of our virtual Broadway tour series. Every week we'll be coming to you live with someone who has worked at the theater we're featuring that week. And this week our guest is dun, da, 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 uh, my little Alosi from Disney's Aladdin. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with me or Broadway Up Close, my name is Tim Dolan and I'm an actor and the owner of Broadway Up Close Walking Tours in New York City. Uh, for the last 10 years, we have uh, been hitting the sidewalk sharing secrets, fun facts, ghost stories, and history from the 41 Broadway Broadway theaters. I have an entire team that I call my green team that are all actors and stage managers um, that make up uh, the crew that guides you through Broadway history. Uh, and then last year, uh, in addition to all our tours, we opened a gift shop in the middle of Times Square with the six foot tall Broadway sign made of 150 light bulbs uh, and marquee letters. So if you've seen that, that's our creation. Um, in addition to our five exterior tours, uh, this past fall, we opened our first interior Broadway tour, which is inside Broadway's oldest theater, the Hudson, uh, which we featured last week. And for info on our schedule uh, and our lives and all of our merch, uh, you can head over to www.broadwayupclose.com after our interview. Uh, and we have everything you ever wanted to know about me and my life uh, there. Um, I have to say, when this all started in March, I never envisioned a world without Broadway. Uh, I didn't think it was going to last that long. Uh, but two months in, I started to go a little crazy, missing connecting with our tour goers, our theater goers, and just talking about theater. And so we created the virtual Broadway tour series. Uh, one Broadway theater a week, 41 theaters, 41 weeks, starting with the oldest and then going forward in time chronologically, which brings us to week two, the New Amsterdam. I hope all week you've enjoyed my fun facts and our weird, strange, historical tidbits. Uh, as for tonight, how is it going to work? For tonight's series, we'll learn all about Milo's theatrical journey and his time working on Aladdin, uh, specifically at the New Amsterdam Theater, as well as the rest of his career. Um, if you have questions for him or me along the way, uh, drop them in the comments below. And um, for those that are joining us live, comment with where watching us from and give us a little hello and so are you ready oh gosh so without further ado join me in welcoming broadway is milo alosi hey hello. can you hear me how are, are we good i can hear you can you hear me okay awesome yeah i'm wearing green do you know nailed that? it I, I really appreciate that. I love <laughs> I love someone who's always on brand. That makes me the happiest human ever. How are you? I'm good. I'm I'm feeling much more um, relaxed uh, compared to when the shutdown first started, as uh, I'm sure yeah. you do, and uh, many uh -huh. others. Yeah. yeah, we've had a little bit of time to like wrap our mind around like what any of this means. Um, I, and who exactly. knows what it means, really. We're all alive, we're healthy. So there's like that exactly. is the place I'm at. And so I'm like, if we can connect virtually and bring it to the world a little bit, one person at a time, I guess that's like, yeah. I guess that's what we're gonna do. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, so, cool. so hello, so tell us about your life. Right. So tell us about like where you're from, um, where you grew up, uh, when you started like maybe first shows, first got the theater bug, did you go to school for it? Uh, and then navigate us through all of that and then we'll start talking about the fancy shows because you're very fancy. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, so um, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, um, born and raised New York City boy, um, which you don't meet a lot of people in the in the business. So no. that's um, people are always like, whoa, you're what? from New York. But yeah. I, I dropped my accent like years ago. <laughs> nice. Because, you know, in, in high school, when I got into it, I was kind of like, I want to be a serious actor. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so sure, whatever that means correct that sounds think, like every school, teenager you know? in like brooklyn they're so serious. right <laughs> correct right um so yeah um i went to high school and you know i was never really athletic 
of any kind. Great. I hated running. Uh, Great. I just, I really, I was a very shy and quiet kid. And I never really felt like um, I had a voice for anything or a talent or, and, and then, you know, I randomly, I was like, let me just try theater because I love the Backstreet Boys. I love Britney Spears. They're awesome. And, yeah. Like, they're performers. So I was like, let me see if I'm any good at this. And I auditioned for um, the Spring Musical, which was Tommy, which is very racy for a high school. Really? Yeah, yeah. Right. That's very so New my, York City high school. I, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I auditioned for that and <laughs> it was not very good. I didn't know what pitches were, things like that. But, sure, but that, you know, I, I mean, to be expected, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, when you're first starting um, doing something. And my drama teacher very, very kindly, more out of the kindness of his heart, let me in the show, and he put me in the bass section, because I guess that's what you do. Right. You can't hit the <laughs> but, notes. Uh, They're like, you're definitely a yeah, bass. Sure, thank exactly, you. Exactly, sure. <laughs> it's like slightly offensive to all <laughs> bass singers. <laughs> Correct. You're like, thank you so much. Said every right. bass ever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I guess the surprising part for me is that I grew like insanely quickly. Like I just, I picked up the music and my range just like magically got higher and higher all within like two to three months of doing the show. Cause really? it's a rock show. Yeah. You're um, up. It's, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm, imagine like even the basses are like, it's not right, a true they, bass track. Right. Right. They get up there. So I really stretched my voice and I was like, Whoa, I really like this. I like this rush, I like this feeling. Um, and like, I think I'm good at this. Yeah. So I kind of, I, I, maybe, you know, call me naive, but within like a year or two, you know, in the middle of high school, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this, whatever. This is not hard. Well, like, sure. it's hard. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're like, um, come on. Yeah. And just kind of, kind of the way my, yeah, the way I like grew up, my parents were just like, you go to, you go to college, you major in something, and then you work in that, even though the statistics of that are not true at all. Right. You're like maybe like in majority. every other industry ever. That's how it works. Right. You go yeah. to school for communications and you, you're working in like marketing one day. Like it's right. so. Yeah. But it was just okay. like my brain. I was like, that's how it works. <laughs> and so did you do any other shows in high school other than Tommy or Tommy was like senior year and then you were into college? No, I did. Um, I did quite a f maybe like five to 10 shows, but I grew very quickly. I did Tommy Assassin's another risky one. What? Um, you're in town. Wh where? In town. What is this high school? Please call them out. What is this? What's the name we of did, it? Like, I went to Severian High School, which is funny because it's an all-boys Catholic high school in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. What? I know. I know. I, I know. They, we don't have time, but I have so many questions I know. that we're going to have to... I'm going to have to write you an Next. email after this. Or Right. Wow. Okay. Right. Assassin <laughs> blows my mind. But okay. Keep um, going. Did, yes. Uh, Scarlet Pimpernel. Um, just like... Oh, Guys and Dolls. Guys and Dolls. Was okay. Like first sure. Lead. That okay, was the only like... Great. That was the only traditional show right. we, we did. That's yeah. It was just a few. They're like, we're running assassins and guys and dolls and rep. You're like, great. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be Squeaky uh, from and one show. and Sarah right. Brown. Perfect. Right. Nailed it. Yeah, I learned a lot really quickly. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so then you go presumably to college. Did you go to college for theater? Yeah, I went to Marymount Manhattan College. Ah, great. Okay. Um, as a musical theater student, and Sticking I went to the tri-state area. Yep. So in the tri-state area, yeah. Um, and, you know, like, I was, of course, I was looking at, like, NYU, but it was literally double the money. Sure. Um, and so I was just kind of like, you know what? This is, this is a musical theater program. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some sort of education, and what I do with it is going to make the difference. So it doesn't matter where I go. I'm going to do what I want to do. And Marymount was great. It was great to me. Yeah, so. it's a great school. I've known a lot of people have gone there. And I, I we yeah. had some similar teachers from my college. And it, I mean, it right. really, and I think that you have the added benefit of you're in New York City, so you can go see shows. Oh and God. a lot yeah. of the teachers are just like, they get it because they're living that world. Yeah, um, my teachers were Fosse dancers. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Like, you can't get, you cannot get any closer. Yeah, you're never really going to top that. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. So then you, okay. You finished college. That goes well. You do all four years. You, yeah, I did all four years, graduated, right. um, you know, usual timing. And yep. then um, I went out to the world and like, I was, I was a, uh, my like survival job was I was a pizza boy in Parksville, Brooklyn. As uh, you do. I, I worked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, as an Italian kid from Brooklyn does. Right. Um, and that was my job throughout college uh, part-time. And then to to save money because we all know how hard being an actor can be especially starting out 
Correct. I continue to work part time at the pizzeria, but also live at home with my parents in Brooklyn. Oh, saving all the money in the world. The smartest just, decision ever. Not really saving, but the little I was making, I was putting into headshots, you know, like all the things, the classes. Yeah. Um, and then slowly, you know, I kind of knew that, you know, I didn't want to, I was kind of scared of like Broadway and like the pressure of it. And so yeah. I was just like, I want to do like, I want, I had more growing to do is what I'm saying. And had um, you like growing up in Brooklyn and going to school in Manhattan, had you at this point, have you like seen 8,000 million Broadway shows? No, I mean, now I have. <laughs> Quite but, sure. Um, I, it, yeah, it's really crazy. It wasn't part of your. Theater. It wasn't part of your childhood or your family, like always going into the city no, to see shows. Because it, you know, at the end of the day, it is expensive for yeah. you know a family, especially a family living in New York City. Sure. Um. So I didn't see my first musical until I was sixteen, and it was Phantom of the Opera. After wow. I joined theater and started doing it, uh, my mom. It was like a Christmas gift, and my mom was like, "Of course, like let's see Phantom." <laughs> yeah, I feel right. She's like, so "I've I heard that's a, good." Right. Right. <laughs> I've heard so of that a one. Very special place in my heart for Phantom of the Opera. I love that, as I'm sure yeah. a lot of people do. Yeah, mm -hmm. thirty, however many years, thirty-two years later. Exactly. Yeah, I think crazy. We're the same age. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you both look great. Thank um, you. You're like a little less dusty. Um, so <laughs> okay, so then you graduate, life goes well, and then what's your first job out of college, other than uh, pizza? Oh. Boy? So cool. You ready for this, Tim? Yeah. Like what a, I have, I have my, um, one of my college teachers to thank another benefit of go to school in New York city, the networking connections. Sure. But my teacher hooked me up with Gerard Alessandrini, the writer yeah. and creator of forbidden Broadway. And yeah. he was like, I have this student who's just graduating. So I did New York, New York musical theater festival, RIP. Mm -hmm. Um, Sad. But I was in Gerard Allison, one of Gerard's original pieces that wasn't Forbidden Broadway. And I was wow. performing like, um, and he was a two person ensemble. Um, I was like a little backup dancer and, you know, understudied for a nymph show. Um, Correct. And <laughs> I never went on. You're like, this is um, my big break. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but it, it was it was crazy. I mean, I was with some of the best, best, best comedians of Broadway and off Broadway. It was incredible. Like Donna English was the show yeah. was called Madam X, and Donna okay. English she does a lot at Paper Mill now. She's almost in like every show at Paper Mill every year. <laughs> um, she is so funny. Just everyone. Oh my God, it was insane. And I for the, so uh, all of those listening, do you uh, presumably you all know what Forbidden Broadway is? I assume you do. If you don't, it started eight thousand sure. years ago, like <laughs> skewering every show that was on Broadway and Gerard Allison Drini and Phil George, who was yeah. one of my college professors, um, originally directed it. And yeah, it's, cool. uh, I mean, these genius, genius, genius men that, you know, I remember talking to Phil George and he said one time, I'll never forget it. He said, you know, cause I had seen Forbidden Broadway and you're like, it's genius. And then you get to work oh with God. these people and you're like, Oh my God. to like, just watch their brain, like work through stuff. But they said the better a show is the easier it is to make fun of because it's oh. so good, you know, cause that we, we, spring awakening had just come out and I was like, how do you skewer <laughs> that? And he was like, it's so easy because it is so good. He's like, it blew my mind. Oh, uh, I love that. And he was like, so it's so easy. He's like, you know, they pull out mics out of their thing. So I just had to pull out of his like crotch because it's all about like sex. And you're like, that's Duh. hilarious. Duh. Of course, you're yeah, like, yeah. oh, of course, Phil. Like, why we were I all think thinking that? that. Right. Oh, right. Of course, the, the <laughs> mic out of the zipper game. Um, yeah, that's crazy. I love that. People who are following, drop in the comments and let us know if you've ever seen Forbidden Broadway. Um, or if that's a thing of the past, we're not that old. No, well, they have, um, I mean, touring, last I heard, they're still touring Spamilton. Oh, good. Okay. So Spamilton was running off Broadway, and now I think it's it might still be in Chicago. Right. Not night. like in this exact yeah. moment tonight because of no. that thing no. called COVID. But um, okay, What's so that? then, okay, so then fast forward. What's your, what do you think is like your first like huge show where you're like, I'm killing it. Yeah. I can tell all my friends I've made it. <laughs> um, I felt really awesome because I actually, I got offered my equity card like twice off of um, smaller gigs. Like I got offered it for that nymph show. There was sure. a long story, right. but um, I was like, I so you're a huge deal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to take it yet. I don't want to, for those of you who don't know, like equity is the actor's union. 
um, that um, you're required to join if you work on Broadway. It protects your rights and pay, blah, blah, blah. Sure. Um, but you know, like it's 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 a big deal to join equity. You're you're with like the big league players, you know. And I wasn't quite there yet, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna really wait this out, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get my equity card off of um, a first national or a tour um, or broad, you know, hopefully Broadway. Yeah. And you know, five to six years in the game of doing a lot of non-union work and really getting better and working on it. Um, I booked Kinky Boots first national tour. Come on. Camp. Yeah. And so it was really, you know, the day like I went to apply for equity. And when we had the first day of rehearsal and people were like, who's our new equity members? I was like, yeah. this <laughs> that's <laughs> incredible. Really, oh, that's yeah, crazy. It felt, it felt like I was like, wow. OK, awesome. I really earned this. Good job. Yeah, there's like, <laughs> uh, yeah. And you worked hard and there's like the validation of like someone picks you and you're like, OK, so I'm not insane. It's not just me sitting in my room, like singing really loud. You're like, oh, good. Yeah. It is good. I'm not insane. Yeah. But you got to you got to stick it out sometimes. You really yeah, gotta for sure. Give it your all. And sometimes it takes five to six years. Yeah, that's <laughs> huge. OK, so Kinky Boots, presumably everyone who's watching it knows Kinky Boots and has seen that. I don't mm -hmm. think we need to tell them what Kinky Boots is. Um, OK, yeah. so that goes well. You do that on tour. And then what happens? Um, I did that and then um, I auditioned for, I had been in for a beautiful The Carol King musical before I left for Kinky Boots tour okay. and I got very close to um, booking the swing, but I, I guess they kept me in their file. Uh -huh. And um, around the time when I was planning to leave Kinky Boots, mm -hmm. um, I got an offer to uh, be a vacation swing on Beautiful on Broadway. So I left the Kinky Boots tour to go. Mm -hmm make my Broadway debut, which was like a dream. Crazy. And so, okay, so yeah. let's unpack all of like that lingo that you just threw at us that I sure, clearly sure. understand that we, let's make sure everyone knows what sure. that all means. So yeah. Swing, of course, we talked about last week, or if you've been on a tour as someone who covers lots of different ensemble tracks, the equity rule is now up to 10 that at any moment you have to be able to go on for one of those people. Um, mm. What else did you tell me? Oh, so you had gone uh, in for it. And then you were put in the files. So a lot of times shows, it's the same casting director. They like you and they're like, he's perfect for it to be that track for that man one who covers so-and-so, but that guy's not leaving the show. And then six months later, that guy's wife gets pregnant and he decides to take you know, paternity <laughs> leave or something. And then the stars align and then you get picked. Um, right, yeah. And then on top of that vacation swing is, the, is probably the most insane part of our entire industry because it's swinging, but you learn 37,000 things for like two weeks of a vacation. And then they're like, <laughs> yeah. so that was fun, you. wasn't it? Bye, they're right. back. They're Tanner hopefully, and they're hopefully back. They, <laughs> hopefully they call again. Correct. You're like, is anyone gone on vacation? <laughs> right, you're like, is anyone thinking of going somewhere yeah. warmer or? Right. <laughs> so then what Actually, was the first time you were in the show? How long were you in the show for? Uh, well, it's funny you said someone's wife got pregnant because literally I got the job because one of the male swings had a baby. And so he was going to spend the, the Christmas into New Year season with his newborn baby. I love that. And, I promise and, yeah. you I didn't know that. That's me just yeah, I know. Yeah, being that's random. a great example. I um, love that. What'd you just ask? Uh, this is, I want to show I, oh, you a yeah. comment. Um, this is from Tom yeah. who's saying, beautiful was the first show he saw you and you were awesome. And we love Tom. Uh, Thank you, Tom. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much. Um, crazy. Okay, so then that goes well for like ten days. No, how long were you in? How long did you <laughs> um, vacation swing for? It was it was uh two months. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. good. All right. But I was like, is my I'll I'll take it. Sure. <laughs> I'll take so then week. that's your Broadway debut is vacation mm -hmm. swing in beautiful on a what like Wednesday matinee? No, when did you? Something. Well, uh, you know what's great? You know what's really awesome? Um, I was talk about like nerve wracking. I was understudying uh, Barry Mann and mm -hmm. this beautiful was running for uh, like a year and a half at that point. And I was understudying Jared Spector, the Tony nominee. God. I, I mean, and to watch him on stage again, another experience where I just learned so much about, about quick dry comedy and yeah. incredible tenor rock singing yeah. eight times a week. Um, yeah, he, he oh, makes man. it look so easy, as do you. So, uh, you know, so it's, thank you. it is, yeah, it's pretty, it's, yeah, it, you, even in Cher's show, I was like, none of this is low. Oh, 
This is crazy. No, and he and he's no. ripped. When did he start going to the gym? You're like, now he looks every he looks great and he can do everything. You're like, yeah. this isn't fair. This no, what about was, this is fair? Crazy. Yeah, so that that was nerve-wracking, but awesome. Uh it was just so cool. But he made it look so easy and that almost gave me the confidence. Like, I just I'm not this he's a Tony he's almost won a Tony for this role. So like I'm not changing a thing. <laughs> Correct. You're like whatever he did, sure. I literally I wrote a note like after the first night I went on and I, you know, as an understudy, you move into their dressing room because your costumes are there. Um and I left them a note on the dressing room station and I was like, just FYI, thank you so much, because I stole every timing, <laughs> like punchline, piece of physical comedy, like I stole it all. I'm not apologizing for it because it went great. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, mm, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, basically. Incredible. Okay, so then let's fast forward through life because it's going well. You mm -hmm. then, okay, you finished beautiful. You did it a couple times. You came back. You were in, you were out. Yeah, I was, as a vacation swing, I was, I was in and out that year. I, I left to do like a, a short contract. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I was away and so around 2016 was when I started was end of 2016 was when I auditioned for Aladdin first national tour. And, and had you been in for it before for forever? For, okay. No. no. And so you had you seen the show? Were you like, I'm right for this? I had not. Okay. I had not seen the show. Um, I actually, I is that was very brave of me, but um, I actually did that audition blindly. I didn't see the show. I also, you know, like I'm an actor and I yeah. just, you know, Aladdin is a more of a pricier ticket on Broadway. Sure. Um, and so I just, at the time, I just couldn't afford it. You know, it's just yeah. one of the realities of it. Um, and so I was like, you know what, I'm going to, um, you know, I did whatever research I could. And I also, I didn't know the actor who's playing um the role I was auditioning for, mm -hmm. but I, I knew of him. I had heard of him. People were like, oh, you really remind me of Steel Burkhart. Sure. Uh, Steel um, played the role in Broadway for like four or five years almost. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, cool. Uh, cool. I'll keep an eye on him, like see what he does. And then when I got called in for the show, I was like, this is right. This is right mm -hmm. with me. I'm the right type. So I kind of did it, um, you know, coached it. It was a long, I went in five times for it. It was like about a month long process from wow. September to October in 2016. Um, and you booked it. Yeah. Yeah. I love and that. And I left, I left in um, February of 2017 to start to rehearse in Chicago. Okay. And we opened the first national. And you did that for how long? National. I did, um, I played Kasim on the first national opening it in Chicago for a year. Okay. And then from there, then they move you to New York. Yeah, I actually. <laughs> I, I've been bounced back between Aladdin and Beautiful. I'm so grateful, but like I can't even tell you the timeline <laughs> on all that. I was, sure. I was just like, I was at Beautiful, then I went to Aladdin, and then I came back home from Aladdin, and then I went back to Beautiful, but then I went back into Aladdin. <laughs> yeah, you, Broadway's hard. You're like, this is so Fire hard. Is so yeah, hard. you're like, where, where am I going? Which theater am I showing up to today? The Stephen Sondheim or the New Amsterdam? Great. Right. And mind you, they couldn't be any more different of correct. Shows. Um, one is yeah. the second oldest and one is basically the newest. Um, <laughs> fun fact. Okay. So then tell us, okay. So then we've been talking about the new Amsterdam all week. Tell us about mm -hmm. working at the new Amsterdam um, in an old theater that's been there 117 years. That's, oh man. I'm so glad. I was so happy to meet you and I'm so glad that you do this tour and taking your tour was so, it's such a nerd when it comes to theater because I love theaters. I love that. They're I'll pay you later. So cool. Thank There's... you. <laughs> Free advertisement. Duh. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I'm obsessed with it. And the new Amsterdam theater, like so much history and it's so beautiful. And you, you know this, like an, an average Broadway theater is like around a thousand seats. Would you uh -huh. say that? Yep, yep. Like an average size. But yep. the new Amsterdam has has a mezzanine and a balcony. Yeah. Um, so it's real tall and it's 1700 seats. Yeah, which is um, so it's like, huge. It's just very huge for Broadway, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and it's, it is so thrilling. Um, and not to mention, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it just so to look classic. out, I can, I, yeah, I can't, it's oh gotta gosh. be just, yeah, it's One like what my, you think yeah. of when you think quintessential Broadway, I think. Yeah, Where like yeah. the Stephen Sondheim is like, you know, they redid it in, in the early 2000s right. and so it's, 
and it's underground modern, and so there's right there's all of that modern um yeah so then to like yeah new amsterdam is crazy i love that um, i have a question yeah. for you from caitlin uh -huh. elizabeth caitlin elizabeth was the star of our interviews last week caitlin i think oh, nice maybe Maybe you've changed your profile picture. I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of Caitlin Elizabeths in my life. I don't know. Here we are. Um, <laughs> new or old Caitlin Elizabeth says, Aladdin has some wild, quick costume changes. Do you have any funny stories, costume fails? What's your fastest costume change? Caitlin, if this is the same Caitlin, you're killing it. Nice question. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, uh, you're very right, Caitlin. It's insanity. Um, but actually, before I moved into the full-time role of Kasim, um, I was in the ensemble, on the Broadway ensemble of Aladdin, which has all those costume changes. Um, and so <laughs> the worst part, when you're when you're changing costumes like that, they're rigged with so many snaps and magnets. Uh, and I mean heavy duty snaps and magnets. Um, and you're also wearing layers. I think some of the main dancer roles before they go on stage for Prince Ali, they're layered about five outfits, like around five outfits. Oh, just so imagine wearing sweating. five layers of like, Basically, it's like upholstery. Yeah, and who um, uh, costumes are Greg Barnes? Is that who did them? Yes, yeah. yes, Greg Barnes, amazing. He's Love incredible. Him, who right? Also did Kinky Boots. So so honored I got to do just two shows full of sequins and uh, incredibleness. It's Broadway, so Broadway. Um, yeah. Anyway, I just you know, it happens. It happens not a lot, but it happens to everyone. Let's say that uh, when a snap or a button comes undone while you're on stage and you're like. You're holding a prop or a pole and you're just like oh my gosh my pants or you know because you're layered and it, it like accidentally reveals the next costume while yeah. you're on stage i mean live um, theater and all of that yeah yeah um aladdin before he uh at the end of act one and he sorry spoiler <laughs> earmuffs for those one. who haven't seen it and won't right. see it anytime this year great Aladdin has an onstage super quick um, change from his street rat look into his Prince Ali look when um, the genie transforms him. And sure. so that is just, you know, there's a bunch of stuff going on around that's covering you and mad Disney magic is happening, but that's a lot of magnets. And the last piece that goes on is this, it's basically his vest like clips together and like folds over each other. And the, uh -huh. these magnets just like hook, but um, sometimes they don't. <laughs> So, you know, you come out for your big reveal and your arms are supposed to be out and um, your shirt, your vest is just open. <laughs> so like, then you're like, you're like, you're like street look rat. at me. Oh, like, sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, God. That's... Um, <laughs> well, it doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes, you know, you're doing the change yourself back there um, and very quickly. Yeah. So That's crazy. You know. That number where it's... Um, maybe top of act two Prince where Ali. Prince Ali and, and everyone comes through the doors like 37,000 times and yes, they change yes. costumes every time. What is maybe. that like backstage? Is it, and are you, I can't remember. Are you, you're not part of that or you are part of that? I, I um, we start the song at the top. Uh -huh. Um, and then I, uh, we, you know, come in at the end of it. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, Best but I, but I, I have done that parade and actually, me and the the other guys in the uh, Aladdin's trio, uh, we're waiting backstage. So I sit there and watch it, all of it happen every night. And just in every single wing, there's like four wings in the show. Yeah. Um, dressers, baskets, clothes, pieces, hats, just flying everywhere. Um, but Crazy. the the way I describe it is that is it is organized chaos back there. Yeah. It, yeah, it has, I mean, to it, it has to be. Yeah, it's like a, yeah. it's its own choreography. It's its own ballet. Um, right. I love that. Um, okay, uh, Sam Quinn. Hi, Sam Quinn. He says, Thanks, have you ever had a surprise mid-show swing on in any show you've swung? That's a lot of swinging and swunging and sw words. Swanging. Swanging. Um, have you ever swung on? Oh, gosh. You know, this is surprising. But for me, I've been in many a shows where it happens – you know, it, do, it does happen, but I don't think sure. I've ever been swung in mid-show, no. That's and you, uh, that's presumably it. everyone watching knows that Sam's a performer based on that profile pic, and because I know Sam is a performer. Um, <laughs> and so he knows the lingo. Uh, yeah, mid-show swing on, it's like, um, it happens, you know, it happens to the best of people. Happens, you get yeah. sick, oh. your voice is tired, you're, who, you trip, who knows? Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a crazy, has anyone ever been, anyone who's watching, have you ever been at a show where in the mid show, the God Mike comes on and says the rest of the role of, 
Aladdin will be played by. Has that, that ever happened? Um, Cause it's uh, I don't know, it's a crazy moment in life. Okay. So no. All right. Um, Tom LaCourt is back again. He says, what are some of your dream roles? Tom, Do you have any like name? Like, question. yeah. Is it like, is there like, <laughs> It's a show that's running now where you're like in a perfect world, I could be the sun and Jagged Little Pill, or is it like a role that's not written, or is it what is Thank it? You. Um, <laughs> you look great. You know, I, I think um, there there's like a, a ton of stuff you know I would love to play, but you know I actually have a favorite show. My favorite musical ever is The Light in the Piazza. Oh yes, and did you Fabrizio's see it? Not, no, but of oh, course I have I have the PBS special and uh -huh. I just you know yeah. I've watched that a gajillion times. Oh you would um, kill that. Yeah, you would thanks. kill for Brie too. I, I I think so. It's yeah. not it's not necessarily like a dream role because it's it's something I could very much so I'm right for and I could play. Um <clears throat> but uh and it's not the most meaty of roles, but sure. like any opportunity to be in that show, also it's very vocally and um music musician you need some really good musicianship yeah. in that show for sure um so that would be an awesome challenge i think a really good role for me and i just want to be in that show so bad <laughs> yeah it's i wish more people i think because it's so technical and crazy it's like no one yeah. ever does it um it's i saw hard. the third preview of it and it was wow uh the guy i randomly i was about to leave for my first cruise ship contract and he um, he's like, oh, I have, I have like a ticket in the fourth row center. I'll give you a student rush ticket. I don't know. It's like the last ticket left. And I was like, all right, I don't know what this is about, but great. You saw Kelly and Matthew. Morrison yeah. And, and it, I mean, it changed. Uh, it changed. Uh, I mean, I like it finished and I, the whole audience just kind of sat there and then left to their feet. And it was like one of those moments where you're like, oh, this is what it's like to be, to see a show that's like a masterpiece with yeah. legends who are yeah. all going to win Tony Awards or should win Tony Awards. Uh, and then the Vivian Beaumont stage, it was epic. Um, so cool. I love that. Okay, uh, another question from Serena. This is a great question because this is why we're doing uh, Saturday Night Broadway. And it's a big question. Here we hey, are. Serena. Um, Serena says, what are you most excited about upon returning to Broadway after things open up again, both as an individual performer and for the theater community at large? And how is that first night back going to feel? Okay, that... Um, Serena, let's go question by question. I love all of that. So talk to me about like the shut, let's tag it on to like the shutdown. You yeah. get the news that you're not going to have a job as of, you know, that Friday, Thursday or Friday. Mm -hmm. And then what, you know, walk us through that. Uh, that was a, that was a bizarre day because I actually woke up and um, uh, walked into my living room and turned the news on. And it was just when Governor Cuomo was announcing that Broadway was shutting down that night. We were the, like we were the first to like lose our jobs, and I, I, you know, it's crazy. It's like no, that that's not, yeah, not no, us, no, right? Yeah, um, so that was that was bizarre. And then I, you know, I went home to um to stay with my parents like pretty quickly. I was like, well, what what <laughs> I feel like my job is my identity right now. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what do, what do I do every night at you're seven like, thirty I... eight p.m. Yeah, like I have nothing to do tonight and it's not safe to go outside. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so I, I got up um, got up and out pretty quickly and I was like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna relax. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna okay, so then things. Yeah. on the heels of that, what are you most excited about when you return? You know, I I'm just excited. I'm excited to see my cast, like, mm -hmm. you know, and my company. Yeah, because everyone, I have to say, like everyone, it's just such a great company to work for, you know. Yeah. And there's a lot of mutual respect, and um, everyone just like has fun. And, and the show is hard; it's so hard. <laughs> but everyone yeah. shows up, and we still like have a good time. And it's, you know, we have a good time on stage. But then, you know, it's those little moments backstage when you have like a, a minute to spare before your next scene where you just say hey to a coworker and you're like, mm -hmm. how's everything going? Or you crack a joke or, <laughs> you're, yeah. you know, you're just like, yeah, it's the silly. mundane things about your job that it's those connections. I mean, I, I think that's, you know, so much about yeah. theater is human connections. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's been a minute since I've seen Aladdin. Um, but it, you have to imagine that the audience feels that you can, I mean, as a performer, you can really sit and watch a show and really feel if, 
if the if the cast really likes each other and is really into it. Yeah. And so yeah, it's it's nice to hear that, especially in a big show that's been running for a long time and gets lots of changeover, um, yeah. that there is that that community. Yeah, totally. I'm I'm excited, and of course, I'm excited for the audiences again. You know, to have yeah. that shared experience. It's just there's just nothing. You know, you're watching stuff on TV and everything. As you know, we're all doing the best we can, but there's just at the end of the day. This is proof that there is just nothing like live theater. Yeah, yeah, truly. Yeah. Um, for those who are watching, have you seen, um, let us know in the comments if you've seen Aladdin. Um, and on the, <laughs> I have, sure. Uh, and then um, also let us know, piggybacking off Serena's question, let's ask that to all of you. Um, what's the first show you're going to see when you get back? after you go and see Aladdin right away because Milo's yeah. incredible, of course. Um, okay, so let's, uh, we have one more question. Caitlin Elizabeth is killing it, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, we have time for one more and it's a New Amsterdam question, so we're gonna, we're gonna pick hers. Um, what is it like backstage in the New Amsterdam? I'm a mega Mary Poppins fan. Are there props, cast sign posters from past shows on display? It probably could be a mini Disney museum. What a historic theater. Nice work. Nice, Caitlin. You're, ac you're actually exactly right. There are actually still um, we're very, as the, we said before, the New M is um, one of the bigger theaters and the backstage, you know, Aladdin is so massive, so it makes it look small, all the set pieces back there. But we're actually very lucky because we do have a good amount of space like behind, you know, the back wall and in the wings is a decent amount of space. And um, uh, they, they've actually kept set pieces um, from Mary Poppins and they're kind of like hanging up in the wings. You have to like really look for it and look around. Um, there's even pictures of the five ghosts that, um, supposedly haunt, sure. um, uh, the new am. Um, so yeah. And then actually, for those who don't know this, um, Disney theatrical, um, headquarters is actually on the roof of the new Amsterdam. Um, it used they all to be know smaller... if they watched our video on Thursday. Nice. Did you watch Good. it? You, sh you should all be saying, yes, we loved it, yeah. Tim. We know all about it's this. It's really, the new M is just so cool. Like you guys should watch that and definitely look up, like look into it because it's an amazing building. Um, but uh, they turned the old theater that was sitting on top of it and um, turned it into office space. Uh, but they kept like the proscenium and it is, a, it is a Disney museum. There's so much like memorabilia and and merchandise and it's so cool you know what's my favorite part about the offices upstairs is that they have a mannequin with sierra ba ba Bages? Bages? Bages, yeah yeah with her costume the and the mermaid tail and her wig really is on a mannequin upstairs and every time i pass it i'm like hi sierra hey girl <laughs> hey girl Parda. <laughs> what is it called oh yeah feet yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's um that's incredible susan says they need we need an inside tour of the new amsterdam disney does one susan yeah. um they've beat me to it disney's very fancy mm. um, but they do a tour and i think at the end of it you get to try you get to like hold sebastian's like headpiece from little mermaid or something i don't know i i, I don't know i've never done it but I, we have lots of groups who do our tour and then they go over the new amsterdam right, um right. so yeah look it up uh it might be you have to be with a group but um and I don't know what the website is, um, but yeah, you should look it up, Susan, because it's uh, it's just yeah, to get inside before. that theater is epic. Mm -hmm. Okay, one last question coming from me, and then I, we're going to be done with you yeah. um, for now, anyway. Um, Olive Thomas, the ghost, is the one that's believed to be most commonly seen. There's the photo of mm -hmm. her when you guys first enter the stage door. Do one, do you believe in the superstition of saying hi and bye to Olive on the way in and out of work? And number two, have you? or any of your castmates had any sightings or experiences or anything? Um, so I do, I do believe in it. I believe in Thomas, uh, Miss Olive Thomas. Um, and I'm dying to see her, <laughs> even though I'm like, like petrified of it. Yeah. Um, can you imagine? I do like, you know, like I'm like, you know, Olive, you know, as I'm passing through, but like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes after the show is gone like maybe a half hour after curtain and like I, I'm just delaying leaving work um I'll like go to leave and I'll walk you know backstage to one of the exit doors and I'm like I'll just like peek out into the audience I'm like are you there hey yeah. Olive no but also like I'm petrified but then I'll be like bye Olive love you girl <laughs> <laughs> can I also, apparently, yeah <laughs> are you there apparently though like you can't she loves did you tell me that she loves men 
Yeah, it's only men. Is what I've heard. Yeah, she loves so, men, and so here's to hope. And... <laughs> um, but also like, you know, the p- only people who see her is like really unexpected. We have one guy on the crew who said he's had um an interaction with her, said really? he's seen her, but he's also worked there for like years. Like he worked on the pop ins. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, Crazy. I just like grilled him about it. I was like, tell me everything. She, you know, <laughs> she right now she was like pandemic shutdown great I, she's, and she's like having right all now. of the other follies girls over and they're just like wasted at the new am doing their uh, own inside tours oh 100 yeah we gotta work we they're gotta get in ball. there they're definitely in there yeah this is yeah. our chance and covid ruined it <laughs> yeah <laughs> um you're awesome okay tell everyone in the world that doesn't follow you on social media what they should follow what platforms all the things sure sure so i'm uh, i'm on instagram and it's at the real Milo Alosi. Nailed it. Uh, do you yeah. do TikTok? Do you do um, I Twitter? I don't do TikTok. Okay. I don't do Twitter. Me I don't either. Do uh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, good. I'm not alone. Um, no, please. I, I don't know. know. Maybe, maybe you guys can sway me, but um, I'm an admirer of it all. Sure. Uh, um, but I don't, I don't have those quite yet. Maybe one day. But okay. I do. I'm, a, I'm an Instagram. I'm a millennial. I love Instagram. Yeah. That's yeah. It's uh, the place to be. Okay. So everyone go follow Milo on Instagram. Uh, You have been awesome. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday night with us. I know there's so many things we could be doing on our Saturday nights here in quarantine, but I appreciate it immensely. Um, We'll uh, say bye to you now and then I'll say some final thoughts. So um, have a great Saturday night and thank you again. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye. You guys are awesome. I hope you had a great time. Uh, He is a wonderful human. I think what you're going to find is, um, that the people I'm going to feature are the people that I like that are amazing humans. Um, The the world of Broadway is vast, um, but I think it's important to spend time with people uh, that are the real deal that are genuine. And I I think you can see that instantly. um, The moment he opens his mouth, he's one of the most genuine people you'll meet uh, or see in Times Square. Um, uh, That's everything for this Saturday night. Um, I'll put up our, if you, want merch or wonderful, fun, custom Broadway stuff, uh, there's the link to our souvenir shop that's online. We ship very fast. Um, And by we, I mean me, who does all the shipping during this quarantine. You're welcome. Um, Every Saturday, you can find us here uh, doing our Saturday Night on Broadway series. We have 39 more weeks to go after this. Um, And then hopefully uh, after the end of the 39 weeks, um, we'll be back uh, on Broadway watching Milo as Kasim or really any show. Uh, I just want to be in an audience, as I'm sure you do too. Um, You can head over to our website, as I said, uh, uh, for more social media fun. You can follow us uh, at Broadway Up Close on Instagram uh, and, of course, here on Facebook. Um, You guys have all been absolutely wonderful. I appreciate you spending your Saturday night with us. And um, uh, my final thought is what I find myself saying a lot these days is, Well, now we're one day closer to Broadway's reopening. So that's my little orphan Annie. Son will come out tomorrow. Uh, Salute and farewell to you all. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday night. And um, we'll see you this week uh, upcoming for our third theater. And we'll see you next Saturday uh, with uh, our surprise guest for next week. Bye.